are here with Susan Lightfoot of the Noyo Food Forest, and this is their learning garden. Today we're going to be walking through the garden and picking some produce so that we can use it in our culinary demonstration a little bit later on. Welcome to Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. We are going to be spending some time outdoors today and tomorrow in sunny Northern California, USA to harvest organic veggies and prepare a fresh, delicious vegan meal later on. Our guest hosts today are Sherry Soria and her husband, Dan Latterman. As an author, chef, and founder director of the renowned Living Light Culinary Arts Institute, Sherry is often regarded as the mother of raw food gourmet cuisine. She has helped instruct and certify hundreds of raw food chefs through Living Light, including world-famous chef Roxanne Klein, chef Chad Sarno, and chef Elena Love. A vegetarian for over four decades and well accomplished with numerous awards, Ms. Sherry Soria shares in an interview what she finds most gratifying. My devotion to teaching vegetarian foods for 35 years has saved the lives of countless innocent animals and that dwarfs any of my other accomplishments. Let's join Sherry and Dan to learn more about organic community gardens. The Noya Food Forest is a nonprofit organization founded by um, about five young women who wanted to do something positive in our community. And we decided that a great way to do that would be to start gardens throughout town. So this was our first garden that we started in the fall of 2006. It's called the Learning Garden and it's here at Fort Bragg High School. So we grow food here for the Fort Bragg High School cafeteria and the food is eaten in the lunch program. We have classes in organic gardening. We do a lot of community events and out outreach and education just to get more people growing their own food and to bring people together and we've noticed a real resurgence of people growing their own food in the last couple years and we'd like to think that maybe we had a little something to do with that. You absolutely did and one of the things that is really most important is building good soil so I'd like you to take us over to the compost pile now and teach us a little bit about composting. Sounds good. So this is where it all begins, right here in the compost pile. Um, everything that comes out of the garden comes here to the compost zone and we make these piles. And after a couple months, it all breaks down and turns into delicious black gold. And that's what makes all of our plants grow to be so beautiful and vital. And there's some things that you shouldn't put in a compost pile. Yeah, that's right. The citric acid that's in the lemons and oranges and other citrus kills the um, micro flora that's in the compost. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all the kinds of worms and bacteria and all that stuff, they suffer with too much citrus. Mm -hmm. So come and see what the finished pile looks like over here. Wow, that's beautiful soil. Yeah, so this is the final product here. Life. And look at the worms in there. Yeah, it's the loaded with worms. That's what you want to help break down that compost and turn it into beautiful soil. Yeah, so we take this and then add it to the beds in the garden and everything just responds so quickly. I mean, you can have a plant one day, bring some of this compost, put it around the base of the plant, water it in, and literally within two days you can see a difference in the plant. It just, whoo, it perks up and seems so happy and it really makes a big difference. This is the most important part of the garden. We've learned a lot about carbon emissions um, and how when we compost our organic matter that it saves a lot of greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm. When things go to the dump and break down in the dump, they create methane and that's one of the most noxious gases that's causing um, global warming. So when we make compost piles, we're able to capture those gases and turn it into something that's really useful. If you're not composting, you're sending all this stuff to the dump and so it's just trash. Mm -hmm. But when we compost it, we make something that's valuable and that creates value in our garden if we were to go purchase this compost at the nursery, it would cost us probably about $150 for this pile right here. Well, that's and why we made this for it, free. That's why they call it black gold, right. because it is so valuable. It's it is. It's really valuable. And it's one of the things that really helps us to cut greenhouse emissions, eating a vegetarian diet and utilizing all of your scraps by creating compost that then nourishes the earth and nourishes the vegetables and then nourishes yourself again. So it's such a wonderful thing. So growing our own produce is just the best thing that we can do. Absolutely. We use drip irrigation here in the learning garden which saves a lot mm -hmm. of water mm -hmm. and um, we'll be planting lettuce here in this next week. 
This lettuce is going to do really excellent because we have been adding compost to these beds for the last three seasons and every time that we have a new crop going in it gets better and better. So the soil is improving um, with you know all the energy that we're putting into this soil. The different kinds of, of soil that you use and even different kinds of compost that's come from different produce can even make a difference in the soil and, and the flavor. Of Absolutely. The yeah. 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 So let's gather up some produce for today. We're quite proud of the broccoli crop. So you can see over here too, after the broccoli has been harvested, the side shoots come up and they start to flower. And, and these are actually quite delicious. I love eating broccoli flower. And the broccoli leaves are also good. Mm-hmm. You can make salads out of them. They're really good. There we go. That is beautiful. sweet. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? A lot of people think that only the floret is good to eat, but in reality, this is wonderful. All you have to do is peel this fibrous part back, and this part in here is sweet and crispy and wonderful. During the school year, we have an organic gardening class that's at seventh period every day, and there's four by four plots here that the kids this last year planted themselves. And so this is Amy's little crop here, and she has this beautiful savoy cabbage here. Look at that beautiful, nice, firm mm -hmm. head of cabbage. Well, we'll be using that Gorgeous. a little bit later. In, okay. in a, a vegetable salad. Let's do get some parsley. We'll want parsley. some of that for later today. This is an Italian flat leaf parsley. You can tell that it's starting to go to flower. These flower shoots are actually really delicious. Mm -hmm. um, so we can harvest the parsley off the sides here. And then we can eat the stalk. The leaf is much more concentrated and bitter, mm -hmm. whereas the stalks are sweeter and more tender. We'll be back in the Learning Garden with Sherry, Dan, and Susan in a moment. You're watching Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. Today we are harvesting organic vegetables at the Learning Garden with Susan Light Food from Noyo Food Forest. Okay. Max is one of our students and he was really excited about planting carrots and you can tell he's eaten a whole lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see. There's a nice one. Oh, that's nice. You know what I love about carrots, too, is that when you grow them yourself, they taste so much better. Uh-huh. And they smell sweet. That smells very sweet. Mm-hmm. Really sweet. Yeah, that's one of the things when carrots aren't grown in the right soil or under the right conditions, they can become very bitter. Mm-hmm. So, and it's so wonderful for children to be able to pick something in the garden and just eat it. And that's so great about your garden because the roots are edible, which are, in this case are the carrots, the tops, and then even if there's something that's not used, it goes back in the compost and gets recycled back in and makes a beautiful garden grow the next time around. That's right. That's right. Nothing is wasted. No Nothing is wasted. Whatsoever. Yep. And even the flowers, when we allow things to go to flower or go to seed, they're feeding the bees and the butterflies and birds and bringing everything into the garden and also creating a beautiful garden. On Thursday, Chef Sherry Soria will show us how to create a wonderful kale coleslaw with our organic harvest. Let's collect some organic kale for a refreshing culinary creation later. There's two different kinds of kale here, actually. Mm -hmm. Here we have some dino kale. This is what it looks like oh, when that's it's growing. Beautiful some leaves. people call it dinosaur kale. And here we have a flat leaf kale. And this is actually called, uh, what is that called? With La bread? Senato. And sometimes call curly kale and we definitely are going to be using kale today so let's cut some of that beautiful mm -hmm. such a deep rich green color too okay. so, and we could and so take nutritious. some of the other type sure. of kale and then our viewing audience can see how i use the two different kinds of kale 
This is another kind of broccoli. It's called a sprouting broccoli. And so oh. this is actually a really great variety for backyard gardeners. So you could just go out at dinner time and just pluck off a couple of these and they just keep sending out more shoots. So it's like the more you harvest, the more you get. Mm. You know, this is another edible flower here, the calendula which grows really well here on the coast. And these are delicious and they look beautiful on cakes and salads. And they're good in tea also. They are. And also we have the edible chrysanthemums that are just volunteers here in the garden. So that's these. These are eaten by a lot of Asians um, for good luck. Ah. And then there's also the um, chamomile, which is another edible flower. And a nice relaxing tea as well. Mm -hmm. What's really nice about peas in a garden is that we're able to harvest food off of them, but they also um, fix the nitrogen in the soil. So most plants take nitrogen from the uh -huh. soil, and peas are one of the few that actually put it back in. So they're a really great thing to have in our rotation in an organic garden, because in an organic garden you always move things around so that nothing is just staying in one spot and taking all the nutrients from there. And the kids love them, the high school kids. They'll just like flock to this area. We're like, wait, those are for lunch, you know. <laughs> We've been growing some vegetables for Redwood Elementary's nutrition program. They have a snack program that was paid through some kind of grant that allows them to do fresh fruits and vegetables um, kind of midway before lunchtime. We planted a whole box of carrots this winter in our greenhouse and they were the most delicious carrots and they were you know for this program and this teacher wrote an email to us she's like you're gonna love this. Um, we brought out the carrots today and the kids were kind of hmm not sure you know okay we'll, we'll try these and this one kid tries one he goes I didn't know I liked carrots. <laughs> you know, we were like, yay, we're doing our job. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And, you know, kids, if they're given that opportunity, respond so favorably. I think we have to give That's our great. kids more credit for making the right choices. So many times we just assume that they're not going to like something like that. Right. When, in fact, given the choice, they will. Right. Yeah, I've definitely seen that with kids here in the garden, that if they participate in planting it and harvesting it, then they are so much more likely to try it. Mm -hmm. And even you know, weird stuff that they've never heard of, like Jerusalem artichoke and yacon and some of these more kind of exotic foods that we've been trying here. And mm -hmm. one of the kids this year, after I introduced them to Jerusalem artichoke, he planted it in his bed. So we have a little four by four block <laughs> of Jerusalem artichoke because he was convinced that it was really good stuff. It is. Come back and join us tomorrow as we soak up some sun and some knowledge about organic farming at The Learning Garden. Up next is Between Master and Disciples here on Supreme Master Television. As the fruits of nature nourish our souls, let's help nurture our planet back to her pristine health. Visit rawfoodchef.com to learn more about Sherry Soria and the Living Light Culinary Arts Institute. More info about Noyo Food Forest Learning Garden and other organic community garden projects can be found online at noyofoodforest.org. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash veg.